If the homily is to be in proportion with the length of the readings, this will be about a 30-minute homily. I won't do that to you, I'm sorry. But the richness of the readings for today tells us a story about faith. They have a theme, and I think you, you, you all have probably figured that part out yet, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to throw some things in there for you to think about. They have a theme of sight or vision. There is a theme of transformation or being transformed. There's a theme of blindness, of course. There's also a theme of recreation. We find in the first reading our theme of vision, of what we see. The second reading is all about transformation, being transformed. And the gospel message, of course, of the blind man is about blindness, not just physical blindness, but spiritual blindness. And it's about being recreated. So in that first vision from Samuel, not as man sees does God see, but because man sees the appearance. But the Lord looks into the heart. That is certainly the case with society in general, I think. It's too common for people to just look at the appearance and judge people. They don't look at what's in their heart. They don't look at their character. But that's what we're called to do. And so we might ask each of us our own internal question, what would God think if He looked in my heart? No pressure, right? Samuel was a prophet of God, of course, and he always sought to do the will of God and not his own. He listened to God's voice, that quiet inner voice, and he didn't typically pay attention to his own thoughts or those human instincts. But when he goes to Jesse to select a new king from the command of God, he's looking with his own sight initially when he sees Eliab. By all appearances, perfect fit. Choose him. He's the oldest. He's ready to go. But the Lord says, no, not that one. Samuel has to adjust. He goes through all the sons. He's disappointed. He doesn't know what the Lord is looking for. He's still trying to figure it out with his own eyes. And he asks Jesse, do you have any other sons? Well, yes, I have one more that's tending the sheep. There's some, I don't know about the word ruddy, but I'm, I'm going to say that's, maybe he looks a little, uh, a little light, kind of not, not ready, not fit enough. But it also says he's handsome and pleasant. But when God sees him, he tells Samuel, this is the one. This doesn't make any sense to the brothers, I'm sure. You know, in Paul, Paul reminds us very simply in his writings when he says God chooses the least and foolish and the less likely to be in his plan of salvation. And that makes sense to us. We see that in the apostles. We don't know why Jesus picked the 12, but maybe we're not meant to know why, but that he can accomplish anything through anyone. And Isaiah the prophet, he says, God's ways are not our ways and our thoughts are not his thoughts. And that is also true as we live our daily life. If we could all think like God thinks, what a different world it would be. This story of Samuel's openness to God's vision and not his own insight is kind of the story of Michelangelo, the great artist. He took this gigantic flawed slab of marble. No one wanted it. All the other artists rejected it. It was not a good piece of marble. And he produced the most striking and famous statue of all, the statue of David. We move to the second reading. And what that is, the second reading is a result of the first reading and the gospel reading because it is where we find transformation. You see, when we judge from outward appearances or from a biased viewpoint, we're living in darkness. When we seek to see people as Christ sees them through different eyes, that is when we are transformed. That's when we become children of the light and not of the darkness. And then we experience the areas of virtue and love. 
And we know that those belong to the light. Our Lenten journey is a great time to put aside things that tend to pull us toward darkness. And it's so that that light of life of Christ can motivate our lives and our actions. Does God's light shine in and through me? And people see the light of Christ in me. That's a question for our reflection when we examine ourselves during this Lent. And every day, really. We get to the Gospel message and we're talking about blindness, of course, the blind man. And in that comes recreation. It's kind of hard to know why Jesus went through these steps of spitting in the ground to make the muddy clay to spread it on the man's eyes, to have him wash in the water just in order to heal him. But maybe it was a test of his faith. But Jesus had healed other blind people with just a touch or a word. He met the ten lepers on the road. He sent them on their way, and they were healed as they journeyed. He sent the centurion home after asking to heal his servant and before he even got home, he got word that his servant was healed. So often I think that this is how Jesus heals many of us. Sometimes we expect immediate results, a response from Jesus when we pray for something, maybe healing for ourselves or a loved one. We're anticipating immediate results. We pray for healing and nothing seems to happen. But maybe after asking for healing, we need to have faith and we need to go on our way and continue our journey and wait for those healing moments to take place. And maybe it's gradual over time, but God's time is not our time. As the story of the blind man continues to unfold, we need to draw our attention to the fact that the blind man, he doesn't regain vision lost. He receives vision he never had. He has no memory of what anything should look like. So he's truly recreated in that moment. If we think back to the way Jesus performed his healing by spitting in the dirt, creating mud, smearing on his eyes, cleansing with water, maybe we can link that back to the creation of man where God breathed life into the dirt, the great Ruah, the breath of life, and He created man from that. We realize that the man's eyes were not just open so he could see physically, but they were open so he could understand and be recreated as a child of God, which also opened the eyes to his heart. Jesus' healings are always intentional. What I mean by that is the intention is to heal the total person, not just an ailment. We don't imagine him healing someone and then having that person go off still filled with hatred, resentment, or anger. That wouldn't be healing at all. The man in today's gospel was totally healed. He was recreated and he ended up on his knees worshiping Jesus. Remember the other blind man he healed, Bartimaeus. He was told that Jesus was passing by and he was determined to get his attention. He's yelling and shouting and those around him are trying to silence him. But I think Bartimaeus was from Texas, so he just shouted all the louder. But he was cured. He was healed. Pay attention next week on Tuesday. The Gospel on Tuesday is about the lame man at the pool of Bethesda. And he asks a pointed question. Do you want to be healed? It's a serious question because with healing comes an expectation, a transformation to be changed in everything that we are, everything that we do. It is to see with the eyes of our heart. Seeing with the eyes of our hearts allows us the vision to see others that are in need. You know, we think of almsgiving during Lent, but the greatest good we can do for others is not always just help helping them financially or giving them money. Though that can always be needed. 
but it's in the revealing of their own riches, their own richness as a human being. It is good to affirm others and make them feel both loved and worthwhile. Many people growing up have grown up with a poor self-image, with a lack of self-confidence, and they just can't see the good in themselves. This is another form of blindness. It's spiritual blindness. And it's a blindness in others that any one of us can help start the healing process. The most certain proof that the Spirit of God lives in you is your willingness and ability to affirm God's love and bring or be a blessing to God's people. There's a short practical prayer you can do. I didn't write it. I read it. It's five words. Lord, that I may see. A short prayer, but a very powerful prayer when it comes from your heart. The way we do that is by opening the eyes of our heart and asking God to fill us with His love. There's a Christian artist named Michael W. Smith, and he's got a very famous Christian song. He says, Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart. I want to see you. I want to see you. When you see others with those eyes, healing happens for you and for them. Amen.